It'll be five minutes into it. This is the education of we can still hear you, bro. Hey, 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 hey. All right, it's going to be a hot show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Hot show coming your way. My brother's intimate fashion show is on the air. We are live every Tuesday. Right here on Facebook Live as well as on YouTube. So if you want to view us on YouTube, feel free to do so. Just go to our YouTube page. Our YouTube page is, of course, Knight Brothers Show. So just go there and uh, you can watch us there. Uh, like I said, what a great show we have tonight. What a fantastic show we have lined up coming your way. Uh, super excited about who's on the show tonight. But while we're doing that, let's see who's out there. Margaret Nick, welcome to the show. Q, why don't you start welcoming some folks? Welcome, Margaret. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Sophia Mimi Lee. How you doing? Welcome to the show, dear. So glad to have you guys joining. Had you come on, everybody can come on hello so we can recognize you. Uh, who else we got out there? Q, who's this beautiful lady? Kim Classy One Night. How you doing, Kim? Welcome to the show, dear. I'm glad you're able to make it tonight. Darlene Collins, welcome to the show. Rosie Grant. How you doing, Rosie? Welcome to the show. You guys are popping in now. It's good to have you look all with me. Love. Yeah, Arden Sunday was yesterday. Welcome to the show. Darlene Collins, welcome to the show. Uh, it's gonna be a it's gonna yes, be a hot show tonight, like I said, folks. Uh, Rosie Rosie Grant, thank you for joining us. Look, now is about the time you want to go and tell your friends that we have a living legend on the show tonight. Uh, so go tell all your Facebook friends, tell all your family. We got a couple more minutes to join us before we get really started here tonight. So, yeah, this is the show you want to start sharing right now. So, you know, we had to throw that out there. All right, all right. Uh, like I said, uh, every Tuesday night, right here on Facebook Live and YouTube. But we're gonna get it moving because it's six minutes after the hour, and uh, we're gonna have fun tonight. To a lot of fun tonight. I am Nagosi, a show correspondent from Kenya. Join the Charismatic Knight Brothers team as they tackle the game of health, fasting, exercise, and blending socially consciousness subjects and even a splash of humor. Watch them go head to head, dishing out tips, recipes, and friendly opinions on their journey to become the MVPs of a healthier lifestyle for all. to the Knight Brothers show with our host Equavian, Arden, Lenny, Roger, Pierre, Kenny, and Armand. These brothers are nothing but the truth. Always here to help with all aspects of health, exercise, and nutrition. By participating with your questions and comments, you make the show great for everyone. 
So drop a one in the chat to get this party started. Drop them once KBS family. Show some love and drop them. Definitely appreciate you. Can't hear you. Can't hear you, Lenny. Oh, we got one more time. We got to share a night nice saying peace and love tonight, joining us. Oh, peace and love. This was good. She's joining us all the way from the other room in the house. <laughs> all right. Hey, Sister Love, how are you doing? Oh, good to have you. Will we see you? Okay. All right. Uh, look, uh, yeah, I, I already seen you good. You're good where you are. Stay where you are, dear. Uh, look, a lot of, lot of folks checking in tonight. Checking in tonight. Who we got? Teresa Davis. Q, why don't you call off some of these names? Yeah, we got Teresa Davis checking in with us. We have Kyra Snowden Brown checking in with us. We have uh, so many people checking in right now. We have, we have Kenny Adams checking in with us. We have Melody Butler checking in with us. We have Orlando Lodi Mako. We have Turning Heads, my girl Ronnie checking in. We have Kathy H. We have Kenya Tiger checking in. I'm checking in. And it's on and on and on it goes. Zena Hayes and Danny Nutter and Linda Tum. Welcome everyone to the show. We're gonna have a great time tonight. Welcome, and welcome. with that being said, you bet you're talking low, guys. All right, Josephine Brown, how you doing? Gloria Macy Blanks, how you doing? Welcome to the Night Brothers Infinite and Fasting Show, where healthy is the new sexy. And we got the absolute cootie gras tonight for you. So we're not <laughs> we're gonna keep on going with no delay. Cause this sister right here does not play. So let's give it up. You can start clapping now before we even get her on screen. You can just start clapping now. So we got a couple of things we gotta take care of. The metal disclaimer. CSM. Help us out, bro. We are we are not physicians. This show is not providing medical advice for any ailments or medical conditions. If you have a medical condition, we strongly suggest you seek the advice of a professional healthcare provider prior to attempting any information on this show. Back to you, Lenny. Yes, indeed, my brother. He's a bad man. I'm really excited tonight because my good friend, Miss <laughs> Ernestine Shepherd, is on this show. This is the show that yes. you're not going to miss. If you, she's going to inspire you and everybody else because the whole world we're trying to get everybody to be fit, you know, healthy, you know, and be around. And Ernestine is a prime example of what it takes to live a long, healthy, loving, wonderful life. So, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, hey, guys. Yeah, this is. <laughs> I'm all excited. This is um, a live chat. So if you guys, you know, want to, you got any questions, any concerns, you know, anything you want to ask us, anything you want to ask Ernestine, please feel free to do your thing in the chat room, and we will definitely try our best to get to your answers tonight. Uh, okay, back to you, Lynn. I'm ready to get to the All right. All right. <laughs> no doubt, Pierre. Great job, brother. Great job. Equavian, I'm ready for a nice, tasty beverage. What do you have that our audience would love to sip on throughout the show? So what's on tap tonight, Mr. Fastmaster? I hope we can count on you to deliver up something to quench my thirst. I got something for you, Linda. I got something for you tonight. I'm going to quench that thirst tonight, girl. We got a couple of tasty beverages on tap tonight, guys. And this, this is something we've been looking forward to. So I hope you guys are thirsty like we are. The first drink tonight is going to be the introduction video, The Amazing Life of Miss Ernestine Shepherd. Guys, wait till you hear her story. It's going to be a point that you want to remember for a long time. Following that, the next tasty beverage that we'll have is going to be our special guest interview with the amazing Ernestine Shepard, the Guinness Book World of Records holder for the oldest female bodybuilder. Lenny, I'm excited. I don't know about you guys. Let's get this thing cracking. All right, all right. Welcome to the Knight Brothers Show, where today we have a very special guest. Dedicated and disciplined to be fit. Work out. 
We hope you are ready for the amazing story of Ernestine Shepard, the oldest female bodybuilder in the world. At 86 years of age, Ernestine has become a role model for many people due to her exceptional physical fitness and dedication to healthy living. She is a world-renowned fitness instructor and competitive bodybuilder, who has won numerous awards and also been recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records as the oldest female bodybuilder in the world. Ernestine's story is truly remarkable, as she began her fitness journey at the age of 56 and has been following a rigorous exercise and nutrition routine for over 30 years. Her dedication and consistency in maintaining a healthy lifestyle have allowed her to see the long-term benefits of her healthy habits. Along the way she has impacted the lives of hundreds of people helping many to begin a health journey of their own. Ernestine is known for some famous sayings such as age is nothing but a number. Another is to be determined, dedicated and disciplined to be fit. In tonight's interview, the Knight Brothers crew will dive deeper into Ernestine's story and explore the various factors that have contributed to her longevity and health. So get ready for a truly inspirational broadcast and join the Knight Brothers show as we all learn from the amazing journey of Ernestine Shepard. All right, y'all, y'all, y'all put the ones in the chat group right now because here's Miss Ernestine. We put the ones up. Welcome to the show. Yes, Welcome yes. To the show. Welcome, welcome. Yes, you look so indeed. beautiful. Doesn't she look like a queen, guys? Look, look, let's welcome. Let's wow. welcome. Yeah, look like she is welcome. the queen, and we welcome the queen right here. I wish I had flowers to walk on right now. Give thanks and praise for your presence. So y'all drop them ones in the chat group to say welcome. The ones mean welcome. Yes, indeed. Welcome, welcome. 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 Welcome, wel
happiness and prosperity to every person I meet. To make all my friends feel that there is something worthwhile in them. To look at the sunny side of everything and make my optimism come true. To think only of the best, to work only for the best, and to expect only the best. Amen. To I be just it. as enthusiastic about the success of others as I am about my own. To forget the mistakes of the past and press on to the great achievements of the future. And this is what I try to do every day of my life to wear mm -hmm. a cheerful mm -hmm. expression at all times and give a smile to every living creature I meet who gives so much time in improving myself that I have no time to criticize others. Amen. To be too Amen. large for work, too noble for anger, too strong for fear, and too happy to permit the presence of trouble. To think well of myself and to proclaim this fact to the world, not in loud words, but in great deeds. To live in the faith that the whole world is on my side, Amen. so long as I am true to the best that's in me. And that is the way that I try to live my life every day. Amen. 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 Love it. Love it. Love it. Absolutely. 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 Yes. Well, look, awesome. audience, you, you, you see this, you can feel the, 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 the spirit and the vibration just coming off the screen. If you're not getting some of this energy, then something is wrong with you because we over here excited as can be the whole team. And, so uh, <laughs> but Miss Ernest yeah. team, what we want to do is show a video. One, this is a, one of the major videos you have on YouTube. Now, audience, it's a little longer than normal. It's about seven to eight minutes. But it really is a fascinating Perfect. story. A fascinating story. So we want to play that for you. And then we got, after that, we're going to go dive into the interview process. So y'all, let's watch this. Okay. And then we're going to look. It. All right? Here we go, y'all. I really don't need an alarm clock to awaken me. I wake up at 2.30 every morning. I get up, I say my devotions, then I'll eat. I will eat 10 egg whites, they're scrambled, 16 ounces of water, and a handful of walnuts. I have a certain song that I sing every morning. My poor husband has to hear that. <laughs> oh, I can't sit down. Got to keep a rolling like the rolling of the sun. Oh, I can't sit down. Got to keep a rolling like the rolling of the sun. Make me laugh. Today I am happy and free. Nothing in the world is troubling me. Oh, I'm on my way. My husband will say, You better get on your way, girl. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Ernestine Shepherd. I am 77 years of age and I am a bodybuilder. I had a sister. She and I were so close to each other. If you saw one, you saw the other. She came to me one day and she said, gee, we're sitting around, we're like couch potatoes, we need to do some exercise. And we decided that we wanted to take weight training. So we kept that going for a while. 
finally she came to me one day and she said, you know what we're going to do? She said, we're going to be in the Guinness Book of World Records as two of the oldest female bodybuilders. And what's going to happen? We have something else. We'll be sisters. So we went on back and worked hard. Within a year's time, she said, if anything were to happen to me, I would want you to keep this up. She was having some kind of health problems, but I didn't know that she was at the time. She had a brain aneurysm. When she died, I went to pieces. I didn't want to do anything. I ended up with high blood pressure, panic attacks, acid reflux, depression. It was just an awful way to live. But finally, one day, my sister came to me in a dream, and she said, get up and do what I asked you to do. I didn't get up right away. It took me maybe a good two weeks after that. I made up my mind that I was going to fulfill the dream that my sister wanted. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, get a big hand for this young lady. She was born in 1936, okay? Figure that out for yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring on Ernestine Shepard. Oh, Miss Ernestine. Do your thing. After I did that show, I came in first place in my age category. It was maybe about a month later, my manager called me and he said, Guinness Book of World Records has called and said, yes, you are the oldest female competitive bodybuilder in the I do the same thing day in and day out. I eat the same way day in and day out. I drink four bottles of liquid egg whites a day. No high blood pressure medicine. No medicine for panic attacks. No medicine for acid reflux. And by me out running and walking, the depression and anxiety just left. I do it because I have to practice what I preach. I can't tell anyone to do anything if I'm not doing it. I started my class with 10 people in the class. That class has grown. Some mornings, everybody can't get in the room. Then I was really shocked when the men said they too wanted to train with me. I know what I can do, but I want to help the others. I am so inspired by her, and you know, I am 66 years old, just celebrated a birthday, and I feel like I'm 21. All right, man, look right. like it too. I feel like I'm 21. <laughs> <laughs> you see Miss Ernest, and she's just going. And you're looking at her, and you say, okay, well, I'm 61, and she's, so you're like, something inside of you is like, Rah! it's deeper than just coming to this class and working out. It's deeper. She made me want to live again, mentally. The spirit of this woman grabbed me back. I bless her and honor her because she's the greatest woman on this earth. <laughs> Most of the people in our community haven't done anything since gym in high school, you know. Uh, and now you see this many people in the room working out. I mean, you know, this doesn't usually happen. 
And as we go out into the communities, to churches, to, to the supermarket, wherever we go, we are examples of what she has put on the inside of us. That a lot of times we don't take time to put back and nurture our own selves. And that's so important because we, we impact the community so, so greatly. Not everybody wants to be a bodybuilder. Not everybody wants to be a runner. But find what you like to do. And I say to my senior ladies and the men, don't forget, age is nothing but a number and you can get fit. Hey, that was a beautiful production. A beautiful, oh, a beautiful, a beautiful yes. production. Uh, we have to give shout outs to prevention.com who actually did their broadcast yes. for Ernestine Shepherd. What a wonderful uh, testimony. Your life is just a, such an example for all of us. Nobody watching, nobody listening in the sound of my voice or yours has any excuse but to keep on keeping on because of you, Miss Ernestine. And we are just thankful for right. just, just, just thankful. So we're gonna dive into the interview now. And who, who's gonna start it off here? I think I think we're gonna, think we're gonna kick it off, off, Lenny. I think I'm gonna start it off. Miss Ernestine, once again, we are just so grateful and thankful to have you as our special guest tonight. And we wanna talk about all facets of your life. And, and if you don't mind, we want to go back to the very origin. What was your childhood like growing up in a family of 11 children? And can you give us an idea what yeah. life was like in the 40s and the 50s? If you could just take your time and tell us about that, if you would. Okay, I'm happy to tell you about that. Well, thank you. At the age of 11, I was riding a bicycle. And I loved riding a bicycle. And I was riding down back. And I would holler to my mother, look, mom, no hands, no hands. <laughs> and I'd say, stop that, don't do that. But then one day I said to her, look, mom, no hands. And I went down the back and there came a car. The car hit me, and during that time, those old big heavy cars, boy, oh boy, it threw me up in the air, and then I fell down on the ground, and everyone was so excited that to put me in the car, they shut my left ankle in the car door. Wow. Well, oh. I had to go to the hospital. When I went to the hospital, they said that I would never be able to wear heels. I would never be able to do any type of exercise because my leg was really, really damaged. So I accepted that. And I did absolutely no exercises whatsoever. Wow. I sat on the front porch. But then I like to sing, so I just started singing. And then plus, I always like to look cute, so I thought. <laughs> and I was just like, just hope that was what I did during my young days. Wow. I was something else. <laughs> <laughs> Just so to follow up say? on that for a second, what, what, just to follow up on that, what was life like back there in the 40s and the 50s? What, what kind of experiences did you have outside of the family stuff? How was society as a whole back in that time? If you, if you could touch on that a little bit. Well, back in the 40s, gee, it, it was so, so different. We had to, when we were going to school, we had to uh, go off to school with our sisters and brothers to make certain that each person got to the class that they were supposed to. And then when school mm -hmm. was out, then what we did, we waited for each other, and then we all came home together. 
we never separated. Wow. But then one time, yeah. I decided I wanted to do something else. I wanted to become <laughs> a majorette. So I asked my parents, could I become a majorette? And they said, well, okay. That gave me the opportunity to march and twirl the stick, you know, and wear the little short skirt. I was so thrilled with that. And then I was always on the front line. You know, I had to be first. And that was really a joy. And then I also liked to sing. And oh man, I would be at church singing every Sunday. And then when I was in church, gosh, I was a little bad girl because I wasn't paying any attention to the preacher because my goodness, I couldn't understand why these people were jumping up, making noise. And I would say to myself, look at them making all that noise. Why don't they sit down and shut up? And I always had my on the back too, looking at my fingernails and my rings. And it was just, I was just a bad little girl. <laughs> oh, I, Pierre. Oh, it's just uh, Pierre, Pierre. Okay. So, um, Ernestine, who were some of the people um, that had a positive impact on your life during your teen years and your early adult years? Any relatives, during my, pastors, or okay. During my teen years, I loved my grandmother, and she mm. had talked with me and was telling me all the different things that I would make the end up doing. And she said, she called me Teeny. She says, Teeny, I want you to know that you are going to end up doing something great. I said, what? I called her my move. I said, what in the world am I going to do great? She said, you just keep on living and you'll find out what I'm talking about. <laughs> then uh, yeah. I tell you, that, that's who motivated me. And gosh, she took me to church. But like I said, I wasn't paying any attention to people, but listening to the music, I learned to love the songs and I would sing the song. We would walk to church and back home from church. She taught me how to sit like a young lady. I wow. never once sat with my legs open. You had to have your legs crossed and you had to sit up straight and then plus, your clothes had to be in perfect shape. Everything had to match. And that was the way that my grandmother had me doing that time. Awesome. Oh, so Diva awesome. train. <laughs> so look, we, we wanna we wanna make a shift shift over to how how your whole legacy that you're you're so well known for. So we're gonna have the panel to start off, and I think who we have up first. Uh, Pierre. I love Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> we do too. <laughs> Turn your mic on, Pierre. Turn your mic on, Pierre. I got you. Ernestine, you know I love you too, girl. So much. <laughs> we've been we, we, so much on the same, or we've been on the, the same road, just different paths, you know. Now finally we have come together you know, to do some great stuff. And I'm looking forward to even greater stuff between, you know, all of us with the Knight Brothers and everybody else. Now, so um, oh. uh, share your story of how your, you know, how your system, how it inspired both um, of you to get started exercising at age 56. Most people at 56, they just sit, they just sit home, ain't doing nothing. But you guys decided <laughs> y'all was going to you know, I, I, I know the story, but please tell the story to everybody. Um, the early success and joy um, you discovered and, you know, what it was like the tragedy of losing such an amazing, you know, amazing sister. You know, I'm so sorry for that, but, you know, but, it, you know, you are, you are doing her, 
the way it's supposed to be done. You know, you're representing her, you know, you're showing the world, you know, what can be done when you know when you set your mind to something, you know, and and I understand the inspiration behind, you know, and the drive because of, you know, the, the tragedy or what, what happened. I understand that you use that, you know, to, to to springboard you to where you are now. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and tell your story with this. Okay, my husband was the chairman of the trustee board at Union Memorial United Methodist Church. Wow. Such okay. a good man. So every year they would have a church picnic. So he came to Velvet and me and he said, we are going to have a picnic, but guess what? It's going to be a swimming pool. So you and Velvet uh -oh. go out and purchase bathing suits so you can get in the pool. Velvet and I went out to purchase these bathing suits. <laughs> well, I put mine on and she put hers on. Velvet looked over at me and had begun laughing. So I in turn turned and looked at her. I said, you're not looking so good yourself. So don't be laughing. <laughs> she said, we'll take these suits off. We are not going to get in that pool. We'll just go and sit there and have fun. So I said, okay. We went to the picnic and we sat around and we heard ladies stating that they were going to an exercise class and they stated that they were going to cop in college so we said gee maybe we should try to go to cop in college so within a matter of a couple of weeks velvet and i went over to Coppin, and we told the instructor his name was dr bennett that we wanted to start working out he said, well, what I'm going to be teaching, um, you won't be working out with weights, but we're going to be doing a rope. I said, oh my goodness, I can't do a robots because I have a bad leg and I can't use my leg to do any type of exercise. Velvet looked at me and stated, you hurt your leg when you were 11. You're not 11 anymore. You're walking around, you're doing everything that you want to do. So don't start saying you cannot do aerobics. Mm, so good. I went in and we started doing aerobics, but I was still apprehensive about doing it because I was really afraid of hurting my leg. Next thing I knew, Velvet's body was in good shape. And everybody was asking her questions. She got to go out and make speeches. Oh man, nobody asked me anything. <laughs> so then the middle of the night at the gym, I got angry and I said, I'm getting out of here and I'm never ever coming back. So I walked home and then after class was over, Velvet came to the house and she said, if you want this joy that I'm having, you had better get started. So I did. We started lifting weights, but we only did it maybe one day out of a week at Coppin. And we decided that we needed to go to an exercise class. So we found a gym and we went to the gym and we started working out. And boy, was I enjoying that work out. Boy, oh boy, I learned how to do shoulders, just about everything. So finally, as we kept working out, Velvet came to me one day and stated, oh, I got up this morning. My head was aching me so badly. I don't know what's causing this headache. I said, well, maybe you have your braid too tight because she wore it like I wore mine and you put a rubber band around it and you had it tight. So I said to her, 
open it up, don't wear it that tight. So she said, okay. The next time she came to me and stated that it felt like water was running in her ears. So I said, well, maybe that's because we've been swimming and maybe that's the water that's got to into your ears. So I said, we won't get in the water that much. The next time she had trouble seeing out of her eyes. Wow. And the last mm. thing, she didn't know who she was when she awakened one morning, wow. but she got herself together. So I said, I'm tired of this. We're going to the hospital. So my parents got to her before I did, and they took her to Providence Hospital. I got there and I said, what did they say? She said, no one has seen me as of yet. So I said, what we're going to do is leave here and go to another hospital. She got in the car, she laid her head on my lap, and we drove to St. Agnes Hospital. While she had her head on my lap, she looked up at me and said, Teeny, if anything were to happen to me, I want you to promise that you will continue what we started. We want to help as many people as we can to live a healthy, happy, wow. positive, constant lifestyle by number one, prayer. Number two, eating healthy. Number three, exercise. And by all means, the easiest thing to do is to start walking. Do you promise me you will do that? Oh, well, to oh. keep her mouth quiet, I said yes. So I gave her my pinky finger and she gave me hers. We put them together. We got to St. Agnes Hospital and I said, do you want a wheelchair? She says, no, I'm going to walk in. She walked in and she told them what was wrong. They took her in the back immediately. And within about 20 minutes, they came out and told us that your sister and your daughter had a brain aneurysm and it had already burst. The water that mm. she felt running in her ear, that was because the aneurysm had already burst and it was blood. The headache, all of those things were contributed to the aneurysm. She laid back there and before we knew it, she died. Wow. I screamed and I cried and I said, now I don't have anyone. What am I going to do? My baby sister said, you have me. I will stick with you. I told her I loved her very, very much, but she wasn't what I wanted at that moment. Mm -hmm. So Velvet had stated that she wanted to be cremated. So she was cremated and at the, her service, I sang the Lord's Prayer by Gates. And after I sang that song by Gates and the service was over, wow, I hated everybody. I hated God because I couldn't understand how he could let someone so good die and leave me here who just did anything, said bad words, did all kinds of things. And then I looked around at others and I said, and look at these other people. They are bad, he allowed them to live, but took my sister away. Wow. Well, I went home and I just stayed in and had to go back and forth to the hospital because I was suffering with anxiety. 
One night I had gone to bed and I was awakened. And she said to me, you aren't doing what I asked you to do. Get up and do what I asked you to do. Wow. I looked around, I didn't see anyone. And I laid back down and she said it again. And then after that, I got up the next day and I was walking down the street and there was a church that was having a revival service. So I walked into that church and I said, if they get on my so-and-so nerves, I am gonna leave. I sat on the back pew of that church and they started playing a song that I would always sing. And the words were, here I am, Lord. It is I, Lord. I have heard you calling through the night. I will go, Lord, where you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I jumped up and did something I never did before. I disrupted that revival service. And I said, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Restore to me the joy of each new day. Give me back the love that I once had for you and never ever let me slip away. And I knew right then and there what I was going to do. So a friend of mine named Raymond Day said, I'm gonna take you to a bodybuilding show. We went to the bodybuilding show and the former Mr. Universe, Yanni Schamberger was giving a show. And there I was sitting in the audience and he saw me, I was dressed in white. And he came off the stage and he said, would you mind giving out the trophies to my winners? And I was so happy. I said, yes, I'll give them out. I strutted up on that stage and gave out all of the trophies. And then after that, I said to him, I want to become a bodybuilder. Will you help me? He said, yes, but you have to go on a journey with me and promise that you would do everything that I tell you. Will you do that? I said, yes. So first what we did, he took pictures of me and then sent me exercises and then also sent me a diet to eat. So I did everything that he said. Then before I knew it, he said, you are ready to do your first show. So I went on the stage. I was 71 years of age. Wow. And there my husband wow. was sitting in the audience with his hands folded. I didn't tell him I was going to go on stage in this skimpy suit. And I said to, I said to Yanni, I can't do it because he'll have a fit. He said, it's either now or never. So I walked out on that stage and they played the song more, more, more. How do you like it? How do you like it? <laughs> well, I got carried away. I shook myself. I did everything that I was big enough to do. I got on the floor. I did push-ups. I did bicycles. I did everything. And then when the show was over, they told me that I had become the winner. And I was really shocked and I cried because that was what my sister wanted to do. So then the next thing, Yanni got a call from Guinness Book of World Records and we went to Rome. I did 
exercises there. The bodybuilders, oh, they were humongous. They picked me up and I laid in their arms. I had a good time. <laughs> it was a joy. And I carried my sister's ashes with me. We arrived wow, in Rome wow, wow. March the 16th. And that was my sister's birthday. When we got off the plane, some of the tag numbers were 316, her birthday. Wow. When we got into the hotel, the song that was playing, When You Walk Through a Storm, you know what that is. You never walk alone. Wow. And I said, she's here. So then after that, they gave me my certificate, my medal, my shirt, my shorts. They gave me everything and said, now you are the oldest female competitive bodybuilder in the world. I returned home. We got a call from Ripley's Believe It or Not. I went to New York. I did a show there. And then they called me Granny Six Pack. And that's what is in the Guinness Book of World uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not. Granny Six Pack. Next thing wow. I do. I was going from place to place to place. And then I knew I had to do what my sister wanted. I started training people and I wanted them to live a healthy, happy, positive, confident lifestyle. And we pray before we do our exercises and we pray after the exercises. And this is what I have been doing for the past 30 years. Amen. And that, audience, hold on for a second. Uh, audience, drop a one. Drop a one in the chat group. That means you clapping. That means you saying amen. Everybody right now, drop a one in the chat group. Is this an amazing story or what? <laughs> amazing. Incredible. And Mr. Anastasia, we want to we want to shift to you because you help so many people. We want to shift to another amazing aspect of your life and talk about your 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 running and your walking and, and what you do for people. Uh, Pierre, why don't you why don't you throw that question out real fast? Okay. All right. So yeah. So um, you know how and when uh, did you did your passion for running begin? And how often do you run and what is the normal distance you run for? Well, here's what happened. In the beginning, I started walking. And as I kept walking, my pace for walking got faster. So then that made me start doing sort of like a trot. Uh -huh. And then uh -huh. after that, I got faster, and then I had to go right. do the run. And then all of the people who saw me wanted to go out and walk with me. So I formed a group, and I called it my community walk. With my community walk, community wash, we had about. 50 or 60 people to walk with wow. me. CNN heard about it. And the one who could walk, walk. And the ones who could run would run. CNN took pictures of us walking and running. Then next thing, I was at the gym and I decided I wanted to have a running class at the gym. So I started with the people at the gym and we started running there. And then after that, I started another class called... <laughs> 
Ernie's foot patrollers. (laughs) (laughs) Foot patrolling and having a ball. Uh And today we foot patrolled this morning and I took them on a six mile patrol. Wow. And everybody had a ball. Now, Pierre, am I answering your questions if I'm leaving something out? Get back to me. <laughs> no, we have, we have another question. We have another question, but I'm going to ask Roger to ask this question. Lenny, if you can put that question back up so Roger could ask that question, please. Well, we, Roger, Roger, we wanted, Roger wanted to know about this one. Go ahead, Roger. What inspired you to compete in your 5K, 10K, or even your marathon competitions? You can understand. Good question. What inspired me was the fact I didn't tell you that my sister was doing 5Ks and I wasn't at that time. So I knew she had done it. So I said, I'm going to follow in her footsteps. So I started doing the 5Ks. And I want you to know, when I did the 5Ks, I came in first place in my age category. Every time I came in first place. Because in my marathon, okay, that was 26.2 miles. Wow. Wow, I would come in first place I would come in first place in my age category. Now the other wow. ones, you know, were they were coming in their first place, but I I in my first place because gosh, I was 79. Good Lord mercy. Good. Yes, indeed. And I could show you so many medals that I have won from doing these marathons half marathons oh i just love it it's wonderful (laughs) it is really wonderful i could do a 5k my goodness in 27 minutes that's all oh yeah wow Oh uh, wow wow (laughs) and then in my marathon in my marathons i would finish in five hours and 10 minutes. And wow. I enjoyed wow. every minute of it. It was one. Well, Miss Ernestine, Miss Ernestine, you know, that, that is amazing what you've done. And, you know, you shared with us how the doctors weren't even sure that you were going to be able to exercise at all. But you went on and be, go beyond that to running, to exercising, and everything else. And could you explain to our audience why it's so important to, uh, Running or walking can be so important to anybody of any age and part of their getting healthy. Could you explain why that works? Oh, my goodness. It's very important to get out and walk. It helps your heart. Believe you me, it helps your heart, your lungs. It helps you to lose weight. It's I could just name so many things. And then even if you may have arthritis, you don't want to sit still and not walk. You want to get up and move that body. Now I will tell you, I have trouble with my back. But don't you know, I put a belt around my waist now and then I get out there and do my walking and my running. I want everybody to know, never ever give up. Never give up. You have to be determined, dedicated, and disciplined to do anything. Really you do. And you know that walking is one of the first exercises that you can right. do. Ms. Anate, yes, we, 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 we would be we would be absolutely slapping each other if we didn't 
give you the opportunity to tell folks some of the great things you do in the neighborhood. You do Zooms. You, do, you help people with exercise. They can sign up for your classes. They can come in person. You wrote a fantastic book that's on Amazon called uh, Discipline, yeah. Dedicated, and uh, uh, hold on, Determined, Dedicated, and Disciplined to Be Fit. It's on Amazon.com. They can go to www.official. ErnieShepard.com to buy your t-shirts. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? I'm going I'm to let the brothers uh, throw some questions out there for you about that. Uh, particularly to speak okay. with, with the number one uh, about your book, uh, Pierre. Yeah. yeah, you know, Ernestine, you know, um, you know, my, my question is how did you write the book and how did it come about and determine you know, dedicated discipline to be fit. And you know, what's amazing is that, you know, like I said, our journeys were, were parallel, you know, we didn't connect because I wound up writing a book called Dream and Lean, you know, but it, it, it's <laughs> the the school is doing. So I'm so happy for you. I'm so proud of you. And I can't wait. I'm going to be, uh, when I get back to you, I'm going to book. Oh, I t that's so sweet. <laughs> what made the first thing I'll tell you, I sat down and I thought, gee, it would be nice to write my story. Mm -hmm. So I sat down and I had a young lady to help me. And boy, oh boy, my book sold really really great and have any of you read the book no but i'm going to buy the book yet. i'm going to buy it, it and i want it. everybody watching it to buy the book and read it as well please and if if you, if you purchase the book i will sign it for you that's very important i would love to sign it and yeah. then determined, okay. dedicated, disciplined to be fit. I wear that on all of my clothes. My sister made up this mantra. She said, we have to have a mantra. And I said, mantra? What in the world is a mantra? <laughs> so she said, <laughs> I didn't know anything. So she said, it's going to be determined dedicated, disciplined to be fit. So whatever I, I do, I am determined to get up in the morning and go out and walk or run. I'm determined to eat healthy. I'm determined to train people and anybody that I train, they know that I mean everything that I'm doing. And hey, so man. far, as long as I have been training people, I'll knock on wood. I haven't had not one person to be injured because before I start training people, I have them go visit their doctor and see what the doctor says. And if he says it's all right that they can come and train, then that is what I do. I do not start off with heavy weights. It's light weights. And then they work their way up to heavier weights if they can. And Pierre, you know that that's very, very important to make certain yep. that you don't get anyone injured. So that's right, it. Right, right, right. Now, I run my mouth so much, what have I missed? Well, my brother Quaven has <laughs> Not at all. My brother Quaven has something about spirituality. Key, what want to talk about that. Yes, sir. Ms. Anderson, you've kind of touched on this a little bit too, but once again, if you could just emphasize how important spirituality is to you and how it fit into all that you say and do. And you kind of tied in a little bit, but could you emphasize that once again, if you could for us? I cannot do anything without God in my life. Amen. I awaken the morning. I awaken in the morning. I say my prayer. And then I sing my song. And then 
I will read a certain scripture. And then as I stated, I make certain that I thank God for allowing me to live to be 86 years of age. Amen. That I awaken every morning and have presence of mind and I have the use of my arms and my legs and then I can help as many people as possible. And then what God has done for me, he's given me something else. Yeah. I now have a Zoom class and I love training these people on my Zoom class and they are so, so really happy to come every Saturday morning, evening. It's from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And don't you know, they all wear my shirts with determined, dedicated, <laughs> discipline on it. They really do. And, and it's beautiful. So people can go to this website. They can go to the What's website. To, I say they can go to the website to find out how to sign up for your Zoom classes on Saturday. Yes, yes. My website is www.officialerniesheppard.com. And then yes. plus, gosh, I wish you could see them. Some of them. Uh, used to do push-ups on their knees. No, 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 no. They do. You know what kind of push-ups, Pierre. They do the regular push-ups. And I am so proud of them that they can do that. And then plus, gosh, next thing I know, they're bringing... Their husbands come in <laughs> and they come in and work out with us. It's it's just a joy. I think Roger I has have a more years. Hmm? Roger has a real fun question that everybody wants to know. Because if you watch this video closely, those red shoes you have on are actually high heels. So Roger, ask this question we all wanted to know about. Miss Ernestine, I, I see you rocking the, the red and the blue. Uh, have you always been a fashion people? And how do you work out a heel? <laughs> well, I want to tell you this. One leg is longer than the other. Let's see if I can get this. Can okay. this put up there? Let's see if I can see this shoe. Wait a minute. I'm going to get this. Wait a minute. Can you see that shoe? No, I don't think you can. <laughs> can you get it? No. Okay, okay. So we it's almost in there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, wow. there you go. There you go. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's tight. <laughs> and I always have to have my matching socks on. That's <laughs> See, I have one. You know, I told you I had gotten hit by a car, and one leg is yes, just a little teeny bit longer than the other. So I don't want anyone to catch me hopping. So I just, you know, come on. <laughs> oh my God! Oh my God! One more hit, Mr. Anderson. Look, last question for you that we wanted to know. You've done so many amazing things in your life. Is there anything that you still, you know, what's what's next for Miss Ernestine Shepard? What's next? You're 86, going on 22, looks like. Uh, uh, what's <laughs> next for you, Miss Ernestine? The world champion. Well, you know, I really would like to have a television show. All right, amen. Hey. Oh, wow. so yeah. To have a and then plus, 
The other thing is to build up my Zoom class. Those yes. two things I want. If I could get to those two things, I would say, well done. That's oh, what right. I really want. Yeah. Well, look. And we I don't know whether it's possible. It's gonna be possible. It's gonna be possible. It's definitely possible. We're going to be right here yeah. to promote everything we can for you. We're going to promote everything. Pierre, uh, you stay in touch with Miss Ernestine. We'll love to help produce your show and do whatever you need to do to, yeah. to make this thing happen. We're going to go to our close. Do, do, you think, do you think that's possible? It is Let's ask the I audience. know it's possible. Let's ask the audience. Ask the audience. Ask the audience. audience. Yes, uh, with audience. the beautiful energy you, you see right in front of you, would you want to see this show? If you do, put a one out there, please, just to let us know that for sure, that would be a live show. Your energy is off the scale and it's, it's, it's contagious and, and people would, you know, definitely flock to your show. I wanted to read a, a, a viewer comment it's from, from Mimi Lee. She says, thank you for leading the way in your obedience to listen to the Holy Ghost, your agreement with your sister. Thank you for your prayer, inspiration, determination, motivation. Uh-oh, let me get it back up there. Consistency and persistency and energy. Because that's what you give in yes. this early team. Your energy yeah. is just yeah. amazing and helping other people. Ooh, it is yeah. just truly a blessing. I know, but that's how you and Pierre connected, because y'all got that same energy. Nothing can stop you, no matter what. He certainly does. Pierre is <laughs> something else. Yes. Well, look, I, I wish you could see how many ones are, are, are up here. I um, mean, it's, it's definitely, we flooded with ones, and thank you guys. We appreciate it. We're going to do a quick commercial, and we'll be right back to close the show out, y'all. This show promotes okay. black seed oil, the perfect addition to your daily health routine. Black seed oil and pills are made with high quality pure seeds and is 100% natural cold pressed and unrefined. Packed with anti-inflammatory properties and more black seed oil helps the immune system, weight control, healthy skin, hair, and improve overall well-being. Buying from our Amazon link helps the growth and success of the show allowing us to bring you informative and entertaining content don't wait start improving your health today order from the knight brothers amazon link and experience the many benefits of black seed oil all right y'all look we, we, we're going to close this thing out tonight um uh, but visit tinyurl.com backslash kb black seed oil get your black seed oil your spirulina and all those good things so you can you can live it up like Miss Ernest team. But we're gonna have to close this out. All yeah. good things must come to an end. Pierre, you think you can get Miss Ernest team to come back again? <laughs> oh, oh, please, 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 Miss Ernestine. You you are so amazing. Your energy is awesome. Your spirit, you feel it all. You know, I know greater things are in the horizons for you. And if anything that I can do and anything that any of these brothers on here can do to help you. You got us. You got our support and everything else that oh, you could possibly. I could love possibly all of you. Honestly, I do. Believe me, I love do. You too. Thank you for having me. Amen. Well, we want to. We want the audience. To have me. Audience, can y'all do us one favor? And I know we're asking a lot of y'all. Can everybody just say thank you, thank you to Mr. Ernestine, or thank you, Ernie? She, that's her nickname. Uh, could you just chat that in? Yeah, I like Ernie. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> said thank you, Ernie, in the chat group right now. <laughs> if you want to back on the show, just type in there, thank you, Ernie. And while we're doing that, uh, can we get your closing thoughts? Anything you want to leave the audience with, uh, Miss Ernie? What I usually tell people when I end my class, I say to them, for beautiful eyes, always look for the good in others. For beautiful mm. lips, only speak words of kind. For poise, walk with the knowledge 
that you are never ever alone and all of you are my sunshine and all of you make me very very happy god bless and see you soon amen amen thank wow. you miss ernest t p.s yes. uh, miss ernest t is your special friend your special friend won't you won't you give the last closing words on the behalf of the rest of the crew You, you, mute to, it, you have to unmute. I can't hear you. Unmute here. I'm sorry. On behalf of the Knight Brothers Intermittent Fashion Show, and you know me being you know such a close friend of yours, thank you so much. You know for gracing us with your presence and and giving us you know your ins inspirational story. And you know we just we we just love you so much. We wish the best for you. You know, like I said, anything that we can do to help you on your journey along your way to achieve that goal of having a TV show, you got us, you got our support. Everybody, everybody out there, the audience, everybody, we all just love you. And so we're going to, we're going to collectively bring our thoughts together to make this happen for Ernestine. All it's right. gonna make me cry, Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> Tears of joy. We but we're, gonna, we're gonna make this happen. We're gonna put all our energy together. We're gonna make this thing happen. <laughs> yes, indeed. We'll work it out. <laughs> all yes. right, audience. Look, all thank right. y'all very much. Please uh, tell everybody thank about so the much. show and send everybody to Miss Ernestine's website. Uh, official. Yes. Uh, uh, www.officialerniesheppard.com and uh, support this beautiful jewel that God has gave to all of us a local living legend yes. and we are so honored and appreciative to have you on and after yeah. that we're going to say good night everybody peace and love yes. go buy the book hey. Hey. go get your shirt thank you, so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank hold on everybody alright alright good night y'all thank you <laughs>